next uh, presentation will be given by, by Dr. Oyama Manabe from the GT Medical University Saitama Medical Center. Thank you, Chairman, and hello, everyone. Um, I'm honored to be here today. I'm Dr. Noriko Oyama Manabe from Jichi Medical University. One of the key features of cardiac MRI is in its ability to assess both the morphology and function through a variety of imaging methods, including myocardial wall motion mapping, blood flow coronary artery morphology, and late gadolinium enhancement. Today, I will be introducing strain and 4D flow MRI. First, let's review the structure of the left ventricular myocardium. The left ventricular myocardium can be divided into three layers. The innermost and outermost layer consists of vertically oriented fibers. The middle layer consists of fibers that run circumferentially. We will evaluate each motion as longitudinal and circumferential strains. In the left ventricle, both longitudinal and circumferential strain play a role when in the, while in the right ventricle, longitudinal strain is mainly involved. Previously, strain evaluation required forward planning and additional specialized imaging, which extend the examination duration in response to the demand for performing strain analysis retrospectively using existing data. The feature tracking method has emerged by utilizing Canon's Vitrio workstation it is possible to perform additional analysis with non-contrast CMRI. So this is a record of analysis process with Vitoria workstation. You can see the time for automated LV wall segmentation. It takes only 10 seconds. I'm presenting an example of left ventricular analysis results. In the upper left corner, you will find a summary of the left ventricular volume analysis. The top row displays the strain curves for circumferential strain, while the bottom left row presents radial strain, and longitudinal strain is shown in the bottom right. In the upper right, in the upper right corner, a bullseye map display indicates the peak strain values for each AHA segment. So this is a representative case, cardiac sarcoidosis, from our paper published in 2021. As you can see in the pretreatment PET images, there is an accumulation in the right ventricle wall. Typically, the assessment of the right ventricle in LG MRI is challenging, but it can be recognized using merged images. You will notice that both the left and right ventricle exhibit heterogeneous strain curves, providing evidence of pathological changes in both ventricles. This is a case of COVID-19 related myocarditis. MRI was taken after recovery from severe myocarditis in a female patient with COVID-19 infection. Her LBEF has improved. When we look at the strain, there is a focal reduction in the basal septum. LGE revealed a scar in the mid septum the T2 value in the base septum was also elevated 66 milliseconds. This is a case of a female patient who developed myocarditis after receiving her second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. 
In this case, LGE image revealed abnormal enhancement in the right ventricle, septum, and the lateral wall. Strain analysis showed a uniform decrease in both ventricles, providing evidence of best both ventricular infl inflammation. After recovering, follow-up MRI performed one year later still shows delayed enhancement abnormalities in the anterior wall and local wall motion impairment. During the acute phase, we also evaluated tear map and the myocardium appeared significantly redder with signal intensity rising above the normal green range. How, however, one year later, it is evident that this is normalized. During follow up, we also acquired T2 maps and the abnormal high value region in the orange remains present in the septum. So, next case is Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is characterized by wall motion abnormalities in the apical region of the heart. In this case, the pink line representing the septum in the apical segment is convex upwards. When viewed in the bird's eye plot, local wall motion impairment from the apical anterior wall to the septum is observed. Quantitatively indicating the typical pattern of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Next is a case of AL type cardiac amyloidosis. His LVEF is maintained at 57%. I was not confident whether LZ positive or not in this case. It is important to note that obtaining clear LZE images in cardiac amyloidosis can be very challenging. The lower right two chamber image was particularly informative. The strain in the cardiac base indicated in pink and blue has decreased, while the segment in the apical region shown in orange and yellow are preserved, indicating apical sparing. This is a characteristic finding in cardiac amyloidosis. He was diagnosed as amyloidosis based on the increase in T1 value 2. Let's move on to the next case, female, Dilated cardiomyopathy. She presented the nausea and lower leg edema. On the left, you can see the contrast enhanced CT image, and on the right, LGE image. Multiple thrombi are evident in the pulmonary artery and both ventricle and the right atrium too. Analyzing the cine image of this patient, left and right atria and ventricles we can observe that in region with slumbus attachment, there is a significant local decrease in strain in the left and right ventricular wall and the right atrial wall. In contrast, in the left atrium, without slumbus, strain is relatively maintained and very uniform. The addition of strain analysis may offer the potential for slumbus risk assessment. Next, I would like to introduce 4D flow MRI. One of the key features of 4D flow MRI is its ability to visualize blood flow. Do you notice the sliding patterns in the flow? On the left, we have a case with a vortex flow, while on the right, we have a case with a horizontal helix flow. In some cases, a combination of these two vortex types can be present making qualitative assessment challenging. In such cases, measuring at a single cross-section may not yield accurate quantitative values based on flow direction. This is a case of aortic valve stenosis. Before the tabla, a significant vortex was observed in the ascending aorta. Unaccelerated jet flow highlighted in red, was also seen biased to the right side. As shown in figure C, TABA was performed. 
this vertex appeared here. So the image in D and E represent wall shear stress on the aortic wall. Before the procedure, there was localized wall shear stress elevation in the ascending aorta due to the jet flow caused by aortic stenosis. However, after TABAR, the wall shear stress in the ascending aorta became very uniform. For the flow MRI enables accurate analysis of blood flow dynamics such as flow velocity, flow pattern, wall shear stress, and energy loss. We sought to examine the changes in blood flow dynamics of patients with severe aortic valve stenosis who underwent TAPA. When comparing the data before and after TAPA, we observed a significant reduction in the helical flow after TAPA while vertical flow did not show significant changes. From the perspective of energy loss, when we examine the changes before and after TABAR, it is quantitatively evident that energy loss decreases after the treatment. This indicates an improvement in energy efficiency and necessary energy loss due to aortic valve stenosis is improved leading to increased work efficiency. This is a case is a woman in her 60s. Her main complaint is shortness of breath, and she has had a heart murmur since childhood. Let's take a look at the CT volume rendering image. So there is an enlargement of the proximal aortic arch, and there is a continuous vascular structure extending from <coughs> area to the pulmonary artery, which is indicate a patient patent ductus arteriosus, PDA. The pulmonary artery trunk is enlarged compared to the ascending aorta, suggesting pulmonary hypertension associated with left to right shunt. In, this, in the streamlined visualization, it is clear that the aortic valve flow forms vortices in the proximal arch and then flows into the main pulmonary artery through the PDA. The QPQS ratio was calculated as 1.64. When we look at the wall shear stress, we can see a localized increase in wall shear stress on the anterior wall of the pulmonary artery, possibly due to uh, the jet flow from the PDA. Let's check the shunt flow in this case using pass line visualization. The red lines represent inflow from the atrial duct, while the blue lines represent the normal flow of pulmonary artery from right ventricle. You can see that two flows with opposite directions spiral within the pulmonary artery mixing together. The main pulmonary artery is dilated, and we consider that this may be related to the presence of these flows. In cases of typical pulmonary hypertension, it is said to exhibit clockwise vortex rotation with an increase in pulmonary artery pressure. However, in case of PDA, counterclockwise vortex rotation has been reported, which is consistent with this patient. In summary, CMR can provide more functional information. Strain can be analyzed retrospectively from existing CINE data. 4D flow MRI is objective and quantitative blood flow evaluation. We hope to apply these techniques more broadly in clinical practice. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this very, very nice lecture and very, very nice clinical case that shows a comprehensive assessments of cardiac MR with all the tools that you've been shown. There is a one, one short uh, question, if it's possible, we have some time. Yes? Thank you so much, very impressive pictures. I saw the case with a thrombus in the left ventricle, maybe you remember, maybe you can go back in the CT, there was shown a fluid in the thorax. So we say 
um, effusion, but in the MR, the, it was not there. Why? Is this a, a so much time difference between CT and MR? Why did you compare these images? If we do MR, we should do comprehensive examinations where we show all lung abnormalities as infiltrates and also effusions. Thank you for your question. So it is the time difference between CT and MR. And this patient is DCM, and she is um, treated with some medicine. That's why vision is gone. Um, but and also it depends on the FOB of CT and MRI. So FOB is relatively smaller in MRI compared to the CT. That is the reason, I think. Okay, thank you very much.